हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द सेकंड लेक्चर ऑफ डैम्स ऑफ हाइड्रोलिक स्ट्रक्चर सो टुडे दे आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट ग्रेविटी डैम्स सो द फर्स्ट चैप्टर फ्रॉम सेकंड यूनिट इज ग्रेविटी डैम्स सो इन द फर्स्ट यूनिट आई हैव ऑलरेडी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड ऑल द टाइप्स ऑफ डैम्स सो द सुटेबल साइट Uh, for construction of a particular type of dam that we have seen already also uh, we have seen factors affecting on uh, checking the suitability of the dam or uh, for having a proper site of the construction of the dam we have seen some impacts uh, of the dam construction over environment so these things we have seen already in the first unit also uh, we have covered uh, the part of uh, dams and uh, the instrumentation which are required uh, for safety of the dam now uh, we will focus more upon the uh, one type of the dam and that is nothing but gravity dam so the cross section of the gravity dam you know uh, also the function of gravity dam we know so based on that uh, we are going to see in detail in depth the analysis part of the gravity dam in this chapter so basically this gravity dam chapter is elaborating everything related to the forces acting on the gravity dam so based on the site condition based on uh, different surroundings every site or every gravity dam can be different from each other so every time over uh, the particular site we have to make some changes Uh, so in this chapter we are going to see all the forces that can act over gravity dam uh, whenever the reservoir is full also uh, we are going to see the forces which are acting on the gravity dam uh, when reservoir is empty so in both the cases we need to check stability of dam so another step towards that uh, anal uh, stability analysis of gravity dam is we need to check uh, the factor of safety of uh, gravity dam in uh, both of the cases like reservoir empty and reservoir full case so after that uh, we will see what kind of failures that uh, we have observed for uh, this type of dam that is gravity dam and in that fail or over that particular case study how we can strengthen the gravity dam at the time of design or at the time of construction of it after that we are going to see the construction phases uh, one animated video is already there which is based on uh, the construction of gravity dam so after design at the time of construction what things we have to consider in mind as an engineer so uh, let's uh, start with the lecture so in this presentation we are going to cover these much of points like types of gravity dam forces acting on a gravity dam causes of failure of gravity dam then elementary profile of gravity dam practical profile of it limiting height of it drainage and inspection galleries okay so this is the uh, photographic view of uh, gravity dam so you can see uh, the length of the dam is focused this is nothing but top width of the dam uh, this is nothing but upstream side of dam we can see spillways over here so overflow type of dam it is and the control section is provided on one side of it so in detail we are going to see this in coming slides okay so uh, what are the advantages of gravity dam so as we know the concept of uh, gravity dam is in one word it is represented in one word only that is gravity action so when it comes to gravity action we need to focus more upon g factor isn't it and g factor comes with the self weight of object isn't it so the main uh, stabilizing force in this gravity dam is nothing but self weight okay so we uh, are focusing more upon increasing its self weight okay in case of gravity dam or this is the speciality of this dam uh if we think if you if you think on comparison basis then gravity dam is different than other dams in this factor only because only one stabilizing force in this particular gravity dam is its self weight 
all other forces that are external we are going to consider are uh, against the stability of the dam so uh, we can say a gravity dam is a permanent hydraulic structure which is so proportion it uh, proportion in its size that it resists all the external forces acting upon it by virtue of its own weight so it is theoretically triangular in shape and is to be constructed on solid sound rock foundation even though its initial cost of construction is high as compared to the embankment dam it requires very little maintenance okay so after its construction maintenance requirement is less or maintenance cost is less but initial construction cost of gravity dam is high the most ancient type of gravity dams are constructed in egypt okay so these are constructed with uncemented masonry uh, so uh, the gravity dam may be built either in rubble masonry or in concrete masonry so the closest example that you can refer for gravity dam is a khadakwasla dam uh, many students amongst you might have already visited khadakwasla dam across mutha river in pune district uh, if you want to see some famous dams over india then uh, Nagarjun Sagar Dam in Andhra Pradesh is also constructed uh, in stone masonry. However, with advances made in the methods of construction or quality control or curing of the concrete, so uh, presently almost all the types of dams are being constructed in concrete to achieve its strength. Okay, so the gravity dams are mostly straight in plan. You can see here. the the um, gravity dams are mostly straight in plan and are called as straight gravity dam but uh, sometimes its limited degree of arch action is incorporated in the design to allow the thinner profile it is called as arch gravity dam so in that particular dam this is composition of arch dam as well as gravity dam some forces or partially the forces are being balanced by arch action and partially external forces are being balanced by gravity or self weight of the dam that is nothing but arch gravity dam so the gravity dam may be constructed uh, in solid uh, masonry uh, it is also called as solid gravity dam so however it if it is made intentionally hollow it is known as hollow gravity dam which requires lesser volume and we can get 90% of the strength so the construction cost will be reduced in case of hollow gravity dam now uh, if we talk about the concrete gravity dams they are suitable only for u shaped valleys or gorges having steep side slopes where uh, solid rock foundations are encountered at a reasonable depth of uh, 10 meters the highest concrete gravity dam in the world is having height about 285 meter and it is nothing but grand dickson's gravity dam which is constructed in 1962 uh, the case study is from switzerland so you can refer that case study separately you can search it over google to refer its case study if we talk about the highest dams in india then we have example of bhakra dam in the previous lecture i have shown you the site of bhakra dam uh, a photographic view of bhakra dam over the presentation only its height is about 226 meter and it is a type of arch gravity dam okay it is a type of arch gravity dam and it stands second in the world so the it is also one of the highest dam in uh, the world uh, so in bhakra dam if we see uh, the ratio of base width to the height of this particular dam it is far less than 1 as to 1 okay so this is the one of the highest dam in the india so this was all about the introductory part of uh, gravity dam so you might have got some idea about the gravity dam and now we will see uh, why we should choose gravity dam or uh, what are the advantages of gravity dam so if we talk about strength of it then yeah of course gravity dam is a strong and stable and durable uh, structure so uh, now suitable for moderately wide valley having steep slopes also it can be constructed to very great heights and it will be suitable for uh, overflow spillway actions as i told you already uh, what is difference in between overflow and non overflow spillways i will again go back to the same figure when 
the dam structure is allowing water to flow over the crest of it itself then it can be considered as overflow type of spillway here we can see one dam is present and that length of the dam or that dam structure itself allows water to flow over it therefore it is called as overflow type of structure if you think about earthen dam if you think about uh, rigid non rigid type of dams like uh, uh, earthen dam or all the embankment dams in that case uh, the stability is main concern or seepage may not allow that particular dams to have water over itself so that can be constructed as a non overflow type of spillways in that case spillway is required to be provided separated from the body of dam in which cases in case of embankment dams or in case of earthen dams spillway will be required to be provided separated from the body of dam isn't it so now um, uh, this is the main advantage of gravity dam that this is so much rigid that it will not allow that much of seepage uh, up to its failure of the dam and that is why if it is designed properly then we can provide a overflow spillway section over the gravity dam now we have already talked about it that maintenance cost of gravity dam is lesser as compared to embankment dams so it does not fail suddenly it it fails gravity dam case study failure case studies are still there it fails but it will give some warning be, uh, before failure of the dam like uh, we have seen the types of gravity dam it can be a arch gravity dam it can be a stone masonry gravity dam it can be a concrete masonry gravity dam now if we consider concrete gravity dam then it will give some warning in terms of cracks joints for some months and if we fix that cracks then the life of the dam can be extended if it is within the limit otherwise we can have other remedial actions over that particular failure but the thing is gravity dam can give us warning before failure one month prior to the failure two month prior to the failure but other dams which are not uh, which are not rigid which are flexible in nature sometimes it will not give warning before failure and it fails all of the sudden and that causes a lot of destruction on the downstream side of the area so these are main important advantages of the gravity dam now we will see disadvantages yeah it has some disadvantages uh, gravity dam of high great height can be constructed only on sound rock foundation so as we have seen in first chapter there is a proper suitability criteria for uh, gravity dams it must have sound rock foundations only then only gravity dams can be constructed uh, to its great heights now initial cost of the gravity dam is uh, far mm, uh, greater as compared to earthen dam because as we ho already have discussed that gravity dam is more uh, focusing about uh, on its uh, sulfate if uh, the sulfate is larger then the stability is larger so if it is directly proportional then we can say material requirement for gravity dam will be larger and if we consider concrete material or any other material every materials are required to be transported so material cost and transportation cost is a lot more as compared to other type of gram uh, dams in in case of gravity dams so that is why initial cost of the uh, gravity dam is more as compared to embankment dams also the time required for the construction of gravity dam is uh, larger uh, we have to consider setting time of concrete as well uh, in in that particular time time of construction also it requires more uh, skill labors for the construction of uh, gravity dam as compared to earthen dams then subsequent raise is not possible in case of gravity dam so these are some disadvantages of gravity dam now we'll see uh, which are the forces acting on gravity dam okay so now in front of you uh, you can see there are eight type of forces we have considered so all these eight type of forces are to be considered when reservoir is full when reservoir is full i'll go back to same figure again this is the photo view when the reservoir is full what is the meaning of reservoir is full when we have this upstream surface of the dam full of water 
it allows some water to flow on the downstream side then we can say the reservoir is full if you uh, consider a newly constructed dam where we have uh, not still stored some uh, stored water in the reservoir in that case you can consider that is a reservoir empty condition reservoir empty condition so what do you think which kind of forces can act in case of uh, reservoir full condition which type of forces can act in case of reservoir full condition and which type of forces can act if reservoir is empty if there is no water on upstream side no water on downstream side so in both of the cases we need to consider possible external forces that can act when reservoir is full and possible external forces that can act when reservoir is empty okay so now uh, first of all we will consider reservoir full condition now in reservoir full condition the major force I'll, I'm, I'm talking about major external force not internal force major external force that can act on the body of dam is nothing but this pressure that is nothing but water pressure and horizontal thrust which is given by water pressure is required to be considered as major external force acting over gravity dam no doubt we have major force which is acting in case of gravity dam is its self weight and it has to be major uh, internal force to stabilize all the external forces acting on it dam sa swatah cha jo force asnar hai that is considered as internal force of gravity dam the baharun forces act hota that are external forces of gravity dam gravity dam sa ti aplyala internal force jast as na important ahe as per its concept gravity dam cha concept as asa ahe ki tacha jitka jast weight asel tevda jast stability achieve honar hai बरबर सो वेट जास्त है स्टेबिलिटी जास्त है दैट्स वाई सेल्फ वेट हैज टू बी लार्जर एज कम्पेयर टू ऑल अदर फोर्सेस व्हिच आर एक्टिंग ऑन ग्रेविटी डैम सो सेल्फ वेट इज अ इंटरनल फोर्स दैट विल बी प्रेजेंट इन बोथ द कंडीशन रिजर्वायर एम्प्टी कंडीशन एंड रिजर्वायर फुल कंडीशन राइट सो इफ वी फोकस मोर अपॉन रिजर्वायर फुल कंडीशन देन इन दैट केस यू कैन सी हियर water pressure is present on upstream side some water pressure is present from downstream side if in case this water uh, is being sipped inside the gravity dam through some cracks or joints or features which are present over the body of dam then it will take out take some water inside the body of dam and it will act against the stability of the dam and that is considered as uplift pressure uplift pressure so what is uplift pressure whatever water has sipped inside the body of dam through its uh, pores its cracks or joints which are present over the body of dam then it will act opposite to its stability vertically upward opposite to its self weight so that is why it is considered as uplift pressure okay how many forces we have seen first is self weight second is water pressure third is uplift pressure that will act inside the body of dam third important force that we have to consider is regarding its earthquake okay if the considered site is in earthquake prone region if the considered site is in earthquake prone region then we need to focus on its uh, alpha h and alpha v factor alpha h and alpha v. what is alpha h and alpha v earthquake acceleration earthquake horizontal acceleration earthquake vertical acceleration so it is depending upon which zone you have considered for cons for construction of gravity dam okay so if it is a earthquake prone region then you have to refer ice code you have to take the values of alpha v and alpha h or it will be directly given in the problem if the uh, considered site is an earthquake prone region if not if not then we can ignore it okay so third major force that we have to consider as a external force acting on the gravity dam is earthquake pressure now there can be two possibilities of earthquake pressure there can be two possibilities of earthquake pressure now focus on this figure first possibility is that earthquake waves have entered into this water which is present uh, in the reservoir because we have considered reservoir full condition in reservoir full condition the reservoir is completely full of water and if earthquake waves are entered into this water 
then what kind of forces will act on gravity time that we have to consider separately that we have to consider separately another possibility is earthquake waves have entered into the body of dam the solid construction that we have made into that if we are considering earthquake pressures or earthquake wave has entered into this body of gravity dam then we have to consider them as separate earthquake pressure okay so we'll see this separately but while talking about the earthquake pressure or earthquake waves that have entered into this body of water that is considered as hydrodynamic force because uh, once earthquake waves have entered into uh, steel water which is on the upstream side because of these waves that will be a dynamic force and that is why we have to consider that as a hydrodynamic pressure okay and another part we have seen that is nothing but when earthquake uh, forces are going to act over the body of dam uh, then it will be considered uh, the effect of it will be considered in multiple of its sulfate in multiple of its sulfate so in that case uh, we need to consider uh, that separately so it was all about earthquake forces that have acted on the gravity dam now fourth important uh, force we have to con uh, consider as an external force is nothing but ice pressure and let me tell you ice pressure will be uh, present in that case whenever uh, the considered site is in a cold region okay so we'll see calculation of ice pressure in that particular uh, case another force that we have to consider as a um, external force is nothing but wave pressure because of presence of wave action through this uh, exposed uh, water storage or we can say reservoir we have to consider that wave pressure as well another force we have to consider is silt pressure yeah silt pressure is there so i hope you can get this point of silt pressure uh, if the dam is newly constructed there is no much possibility of having silt at the bottom of the upstream pressure uh, upstream side of the dam but as time goes on uh, whatever uh, water or catchment area is there after rain has occurred over that particular catchment area with the flow of that water sediments are being transported and that transported sediments goes on accumulating at the bottom of this uh, upstream face of the dam if this sediment deposition has become larger then capacity of storage become lesser and if we want larger amount of water to be stored in the gravity dam then this silt is not expected to be decoded Uh, deposited over here or the sedimentation it should not come uh, and deposit over here so we need to uh, consider uh, the pressure also uh, which is uh, accumulated silt is present over here and what kind of forces have been acted because of presence of this silt pressure what happens if we do not consider this silt pressure then the force acting from upstream side towards this gravity dam will be larger and if we do not consider that then overturning can occur in that case so we need to consider a possibility of silt pressure as well okay so another uh, force that we have to consider is wind pressure so these much of forces we need to consider when reservoir is full i'll revise it in 5 minutes what kind of forces we have to consider sulfate water pressure uplift pressure earthquake pressure ice pressure wave pressure silt pressure and wind pressure so totally eight pressures we have to consider when reservoir is full now uh, i have introduced uh, you to all kind of external forces that can act over gravity dam now let's see how to calculate these forces these varieties of forces are required to be calculated so first of all we will see major external force which is acting over the gravity dam and that is nothing but water pressure uh now for calculation of all kind of forces for calculation of all kind of forces what we have to do is uh, area into its unit weight will give you weight of that particular object so keep in mind this formula it will help you a lot in calculation of forces some kind of forces will be calculated based on this formula area of that object into unit weight of it 
area of that object that can be a water body or it can be a concrete body area of it into its unit weight will give you weight of that particular object okay now first of all we will see about water pressure okay water pressure uh, before starting with it uh, let's understand how we have to draw the cross section of gravity dam now multiple times like 100 times we need to draw this cross section throughout the semester so we have this cross section as an example over here what things you can see in this uh, in this presentation you can see at the right side of it the image is provided over that you can see the cross section of the dam is is shown in in this and we have um, water uh, on the upstream side of it and this is the reservoir full condition you can say this is an overflow section because it is allowing water to flow from upstream to downstream side and that is why we have some water at the downstream side as well if you if, if you can see my cursor then you can see this uh, upstream side downstream side water is present at the upstream side and the force of this water which is present at the upstream side is considered as a horizontal thrust over here which is acting over the body of dam and now we will see pressure distribution of it we will see pressure distribution of it now uh, the pressure components on both the upstream and downstream side are vertical component and horizontal component ok vertical and horizontal component so when this kind of condition arises when this upstream present over here is inclined ok so in case of gravity dam uh, this upstream face of this gravity dam can be straight vertical that can be one case but if height of the dam is larger than 18 meters then it will not be able to stabilize forces coming on it by only vertical face of the upstream in that case we need to give some slope on upstream side as well it will be slanted by some small batter of slope which is provided on the upstream side and that is why in this particular figure you can see AD face in this figure is inclined one because this is the high dime to support on the upstream side to have some support on the upstream side we need to provide one sloping portion over here and that is nothing but AD that is nothing but AD so in this case if we have slanted portion or sloping portion of the upstream vertical water pressure component arises if not then there is no vertical component of water pressure is present if vertical uh, upstream is there straight vertical upstream is there from top to bottom then there will not be any vertical component of water pressure okay now we'll see that in detail okay now um, you can see horizontal component of water which is acting uh, resultant of this will be considered uh, now in this figure now focus on level of water total height of this water which is capital H beyond this H whatever height of dam is present is considered as freeboard freeboard is provided to avoid splashing of water in case of uh, if we do not provide freeboard to the dam then this much of wave will over top this section and splashing of water will be there towards this particular portion and this top of the dam will not be under use as a road okay so in that case we need to safeguard the dam by providing freeboard on the top of it so H capital H is nothing but level of water which is present over here and considering capital H amount of water which is present over here triangular pressure distribution diagram will become uh, for water pressure distribution now you can see at this surface level of this at this surface level of this water pressure is zero if you go beyond this as multiplication of height is there it becomes increased at the bottom of it and that is why at the bottom you can find maximum pressure distribution of water uh, maximum water pressure at the bottom so the ordinate of maximum water pressure at the bottom of it is considered as total height into unit weight of water as I said whenever we need to find weight of water or weight of object its area into unit weight here 
if we consider unit length of the dam unit length of the dam in that case we can consider that as this height into unit weight of water as a maximum water pressure which is acting at the bottom of the dam okay now if we consider this triangular pressure distribution we can see maximum ordinate is at one side of the triangle and zero ordinate at another side of the triangle so if we consider the resultant which will be acting over here is nothing but half into base into height into this level of water and that is why it becomes uh, half into base is nothing but gamma w h into height is nothing but h and it becomes p1 is equal to half into gamma w into h square and it will be acting at h by 3 from the base it will be acting at h by 3 from the base okay so this was all about horizontal water pressure we can consider maximum ordinate of water pressure as gamma w h minimum ordinate of water pressure as zero resultant force of water pressure is considered as area of triangle formula that is half gamma w into h square and it is much obvious that it will be acting at h by 3 from the base so this was all about horizontal pressure of water now focus on vertical water pressure how much vertical water pressure can act and how much vertical water pressure should be considered as acting on gravity dam if we consider this vertical straight portion from C to D for this particular gravity dam from C to D there is no effect of vertical component of water it will be zero but if we consider this A to D portion it will get affected by vertical component of water which is acting on it right so in this case we need to find out vertical component of water so what we can do in this case similar uh, formula we need to apply that is nothing but we will consider area of this trapezoidal wedge that is A, B, C, D, A. This much of trapezoidal edge is present over here. So this is nothing but vertical. This is uh, creating vertical pressure on this AD side. That's why consider area of this A, B, C, D, A into unit weight of this. Unit weight of this means what? Water which is present over here. What is present in ABCD portion? Water. So we have to consider unit weight of water into area of water. So trapezoidal area into unit weight will give you vertical component of water. And do assume unit weight of water everywhere as 1000 kg per meter cube. 1000 kg per meter cube. So this is what present uh, on the upstream side of it. Now if you assume about downstream side of it, we can see the triangular wedge which is present over here is again we have to consider similar concentrations over here but p dash will be a representation of water which is present at the downstream side okay so we'll see this later when we uh, solve one problem based on this this was all about water pressure conclusion is there are two kinds of water pressure uh, available vertical component horizontal component every time you have to use the formula area into unit weight now we'll consider self weight of the dam okay as i said we need to apply the same formula whenever we need to find out weight of it area into unit weight now if we consider the cross section of the dam when it has inclined upstream then we need to divide that dam into known uh, geometrical sections known geometrical sections you can see uh, in front of you you have one trapezoidal portion of uh, gravity dam so you can uh, divide that gravity dam into known geometrical section in front of you you can see this is the rectangular section which is divided uh, the C D E straight dotted line dotted line B so this is nothing but rectangular section which is represented as W1 whose weight is represented as W1 similarly you can find this another triangular section its weight is considered as W2 remaining one triangular section is also present over here and that is considered as w3 okay so in the given dam structure in the given cross section of the dam the complete weight of the dam has been divided into three components of it with reference to known geometrical shapes w1 w2 w3 simple and now what we have to do is just apply area formula into unit weight of it 
okay so this is how we are going to calculate separate unit weights according to its geometrical shape and then we are going to add them to get maximum uh, self weight that can be there for gravity dam and which is represented by w and that total w of the dam will act at its cg that is center of gravity and therefore weight will be equal to volume per unit length into density of the material so we'll see this how to calculate it all time of calculations now third major force that we have to consider as a uh, uplift pressure as i told you uh, what is uplift pressure do not get confused uh, in between uplift pressure and uh, sometimes people only write it as uh, uplift pressure which is given by foundation or which is exerted by exerted by foundation on uh, the dam so this is completely wrong concept uh, multiple times i have seen uh, students are writing this kind of uh, answers in in same exam there is no role of foundation no role of only foundation over here uplift pressure is a pressure which is generated because of seepage or pour water which has seeped inside the body of dam or sometimes inside the foundation so in both of the cases if the water is seeped inside the body of dam it will have tendency that it will go down against the gravity it will go down at the foundation level and it will exert some pressure on the body of dam in opposite manner to its self weight okay so the water stored on the upstream side of the dam is under pressure and therefore it finds some way through the body of dam it can be through pores to cracks to fissures uh so though the gap between the dam and its foundation and also through the open spaces in the foundation it creates some uplift pressure that acts in vertically upward direction and therefore it decreases the effective weight of the dam that acts in vertically downward direction okay so it is usual practice to assume that uplift pressure varies linearly from full hydrostatic pressure acting on the upstream phase to full tail water pressure acting on downstream phase as shown in the figure you can see the pressure distribution diagram is larger on the upstream side and in is lesser on the downstream side okay therefore for gravity dam without the provision of pressure relief drainage gallery the uplift pressure pores per unit length of the dam will be considered as shown in the formula that is u is equal to gamma in bracket h plus h dash divided by 2 into t into 1 where t is nothing but thickness of the base of the dam and gamma is nothing but unit weight of water okay now um, as i think i hope you have got an idea about how uplift pressure is generated how the uplift pressure is being created and how it is acting uh, against the self weight of the gravity dam now what we can uh, do uh, as a remedial action to this uh, to um, increase the safety of the dam is we can reduce uplift pressure we can reduce uplift pressure uplift pressure reduce kase karu shakta tumhi ate he samajle uplift pressure he seepage mule create jhalay kiwa pore water mule create jhalay je cracks present astat konta concrete tumhi bagitle jacha madhe bilkul cracks present nahi hai kiwa ase kutla construction tumhi bagitle which is more than 100 years ani cracks present nahi so it is not possible to avoid complete seepage in the concrete dam or any other type of dam but we need to accept that there is there uh, some seepage is going to be there isn't it when seepage ahe to matlab safely drain kela to dam safe asnar hai va safely drain karnyasathi kay karu shakto apan to tyasathi ek separate structure provide karayla lagta that is nothing but drainage gallery to cha nav atach ahe drainage gallery meaning kay tar excess amount of water je seep jhala hai body madhe सीपेज है तो सेफली ड्रेन आउट कराए मैं सेफली ड्रेन आउट कराए तो मैं अपने ड्रेनेज गैलरी प्रोवाइड करावी लगते हैं राइट साइड के फिगर मे तुम्हारा समझू जाए कि ड्रेनेज गैलरी प्रोवाइड के लिए मैं फरक कुठे पड़तों फरक कुठे पड़तों तो प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मे फरक पड़ता तुम्हारक दोनों डायग्राम है फर्स्ट डायग्राम मे तुम्हें बगू शकता देर इज नो ड्रेनेज गैलरी सेकेंड डायग्राम मे तुम्हें बगू शकता देर इज अ ड्रेनेज गैलरी प्रेजेंट सो प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जे दाखिल है अपलिफ प्रेशर च तो डैम या खाली दाखिल है तो खाली मजे इधे है तो पहला केस मे तुम्हें बगू शकता प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कम्प्लीट ट्रिपाजॉर्डल है ट्रिपाजॉर्डल है बरबर 
जर टेल वॉटर प्रेजेंट न सेल तो ट्राइंगुलर आल सेकेंड केस मधे सेम फिगर अपन कन्सिडर के लिए फक्त ड्रेनेज कैलरी प्रेजेंट आयामें इतका पोर्शन हा अपलीफ प्रेसर का कमी जाए मजे हा सेफली एक्ट होते है अपलीफ प्रेसर ओवर द डैम ओके सो दिस इज द कंडीशन व्हेन वी प्रोवाइड ड्रेनेज कैलरी नाउ नेक्स्ट फोर्स वी हैव टू कंसीडर इज अबाउट अर्थक्वेक प्रेसर एंड द अर्थक्वेक प्रेसर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी कंसिडर्ड बेस्ड ऑन द आई एस कोड एंड द जोन्स ऑफ द अर्थक्वेक जोन टू जोन थ्री जोन फोर जोन फाइव so uh, whatever uh, case we have considered uh, you must con- uh, you must see in which zone this particular site is uh, located and based on in- based on its location you need to find out alpha v and alpha h factors for them and based on that you can find out earthquake pressures which are acting over the body of dam okay so this is the figure that can give you um, idea about earthquake pressures which are acting on it okay so just have a look over this figure first okay now we'll move earthquake acceleration has to be considered as external forces so earthquake acceleration is usually designated as a fraction of acceleration due to gravity and it is expressed as alpha g where alpha is known as seismic coefficient so seismic coefficient is uh, nothing is divided into two types that is horizontal seismic coefficient and vertical seismic coefficient similar way it is denoted as alpha h and alpha v respectively it is related in between them as alpha v is equal to 0.75 into alpha h in case if you have only value of alpha v then you can assume alpha h as multiples of 0.75 with alpha v alpha h so alpha h can be determined by one of the two methods that is nothing but seismic coefficient method if it is uh, the height of the dam is less than 100 meter response spectrum method by uh, if if uh, the height of the dam is greater than 100 meter now seismic coefficient method or horizontal seismic coefficient is considered as alpha h it is equal to twice of alpha 0 while alpha 0 is nothing but basic seismic coefficient so basic seismic coefficient as per is 1893 1984 seismic zones if we consider 2 3 4 uh, and 5 then basic seismic coefficient are considered alpha 0 are considered as 0.02 0.04 0.05 and 0.08 so these are the values of seismic coefficient based on this value you can find out horizontal seismic coefficient and using this formula you can find alpha v value you putting value of alpha h over here okay so this is the way uh, we can find out the values of uh, accelerations or we can use this uh, curve as well uh, now this curve uh, is from is 1893 uh, 1984 Uh, damping of five percent of dams, or damping is an influence within or upon the oscillatory system that has effect of uh, effect of reducing, or restricting, or preventing the oscillations. So this particular curve you can get from S K Gog as well. Uh, damping values are given over here. Natural period of vibration in seconds is also given, and based on that you can find out S A upon G, that is average acceleration. Actually, there is no need of referring these particular curves. it will be directly given uh, in university examples because in university example you get the, uh, this particular question only for 6 marks maximum for 6 marks so they will give you the values of uh, acceleration earthquake acceleration but just to have some knowledge you can uh, refer to this particular curve from sk gov now this is very important we know there can be a presence of earthquake acceleration as no as we know the uh, earthquake acceleration is present with reference to the zone of earthquake but consideration of earthquake force is very much important here we need to uh, uh, apply some knowledge of uh, mechanics engineering mechanics now based on this particular thing uh, if uh, you want to understand it much clearly then uh, 
काही केसेसमध्ये अर्थक्वेक वेव्स एंटर झाल्या तर त्या अगेन्स्ट स्टॅबिलिटी वर्क करतात त्या केसमध्ये सेल्फेट रिड्यूस होतं आणि काही केसेसमध्ये अर्थक्वेक वेव्स एंटर झाल्यानंतर दे वर्क अलॉंग विथ द सेल्फेट ऑफ इट म्हणजे हे अजून स्टॅबिलाईज करतात जी काही अर्थक्वेक जी काही ग्रॅव्हिटी डॅम बॉडी आहे त्या सेल्फेटमध्ये ॲड होतं ॲक्सिलेशन आणि त्या केसमध्ये फेल्युअर होत नाही सो आपल्याला ह्या दोन गोष्टी डिफरेन्शिएट कराव्या लागतात की कोणती केस आहे ज्या केसमध्ये अर्थक्वेक वेव्स किंवा अर्थक्वेक प्रेशर जे आहे ते अगेन्स्ट स्टॅबिलिटी ॲक्ट होणार आहे आणि कोणत्या केसेसमध्ये टुवर्ड्स द स्टॅबिलिटी ॲक्ट होणार आहे सो या दोन पर्टिक्युलर केसेस ज्या आहेत ह्या वेगळ्या आहेत आणि या दोन्ही केसेसमध्ये प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्युशन कसं असणार आहे आणि स्टॅबिलिटी कशी अचीव्ह होऊ शकते या दोन गोष्टींवरती आपल्याला सेपरेटली विचार करायचा आहे सो आय थिंक वील कन्सिडर दिस इफेक्ट ऑफ अर्थक्वेक ॲक्सेलरेशन ॲज अ इम्पॉर्टंट पॉईंट सो दॅट द कम्प्लीट कॅल्क्युलेशन्स कम्प्लीट टेबल ऑफ कॅल्क्युलेशन मे नॉट गो रॉंग अँड इन दॅट केस यू विल प्रोसीड इन अ करेक्ट वे फॉर द अनालिसिस वाट ऑफ इट इथे जर का अर्थक्वेक ॲक्सेलरेशन फाइंड आउट करायचं चुकलं तुमचं तर तुमचा मुवमेंट चुकतो आणि त्या मुवमेंटनंतर ज्या आपल्या सहा सात स्टेप्स आहेत स्टॅबिलिटी अनालिसिस फाइंड आउट करायच्या तर त्या सगळ्याच स्टेप्स चुकू शकतात अँड ॲट लास्ट तुमचा आन्सर चुकीच येऊ शकतो त्यामुळे हा एक पॉईंट जो आहे इफेक्ट ऑफ हॉर्झेंट्रल अर्थक्वेक आणि व्हर्टिकल अर्थक्वेक ॲक्सेलरेशन हे व्हर्टिकली अपवर्ड कधी कन्सिडर करायचं आणि व्हर्टिकली डाऊनवर्ड कधी कन्सिडर करायचं टुवर्ड्स द डॅम कधी कन्सिडर करायचं आणि कधी अगेन्स्ट द डॅम कन्सिडर करायचं या दोन गोष्टी तुम्हाला समजणं इम्पॉर्टंट आहे सो विल कन्सिडर दिस पॉईंट इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर अँड विल स्टॉप ओव्हर हिअर अटेंडन्स ऑफ ऑल द स्टुडंट्स इज रेकॉर्डेड बाय गुगल मीट ओनली सो आय रिक्वेस्ट सी आर ऑफ दिस क्लास टू नोट डाऊन द अटेंडन्स एज वेल अँड वी विल जस्ट स्विच ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर ऑर विल जस्ट स्टॉप ओव्हर हिअर अँड वील सी द रिमेनिंग फोर्सेस ॲक्टिंग ऑन द ग्रॅव्हिटी डॅम इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बट वाईल कमिंग फॉर द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर यू हॅव टू ब्रिंग कॅल्सी and graph paper these things are very much important unless you use calci you will not be able to calculate the forces and you will not be able to understand the action of forces so this is much more important from the assignment point of view and from university exam point of view in both of the cases you will require it so these are your uh, own marks you can uh, easily get 8 uh, to 6 six, 6 six to 8 marks in uh, this particular problem so every time in university exam Uh, one problem will be there based on uh, the forces acting on the gravity dam if not then theory question will be asked in terms of its formulas okay so if you are going to face this in same examination on physical mode then you have to follow these particular steps to get the marks of this particular unit unit number 2 okay so uh, refer this video recording will be sent to you on google classroom as well you can refer it again whenever it is required for the calculation of forces or if you are not able you are have, uh, finding some trouble in finding out uh, particular forces at the time of practical session then also you can repeat this video okay so thank you and just uh, give attendance to cr it will be noted at its location only thank you